Hello and welcome to Tricks of the Astray channel. Today is the 19th of February 2017 and today's video is part two of Beyonce, the gender trade. So um, before I start, as I usually say, I'm not against anybody being a transgender, right? What I'm against and what I am exposing is the organized system put in place to take children before they can reach the age which they can make a choice for themselves, right? To live, right? In a sex that they want to, that choice is taken from them. They are forcefully castrated, mutilated, fed hormones, and forced to live in a gender that's not their birth gender. Now, as I've always said, if you've watched the part one of this video already, you will, we have talked about that already. And um, as I've always said, the people who are the hams of this is the Vatican. All right. Now, what people when people come in contact with the truth, it, it serves like uh, I mean, it's like a, a, a shock. It's too shocking for you to be able to accept it. All right. So why am I saying that? It's because of the fact that, you know, your whole life, our lives have been built on lies. And so we're used to the lie. We've accepted the lie as a fact, as the truth. And so when you come in contact with the truth, it's, it's like something you can't understand. Even with all the facts being presented to you, all right? With all the facts presented to you beyond reasonable doubt, you will still choose not to accept it. But that's that's on you. It's it's not gonna be on me because I found out the truth, and I'm gonna stick with it. Now, the reason why this show is about Beyonce and Part Two is because you know a lot of people watch this light show of the Grammys, which you can see right now on my screen, and they'll say, "Oh yeah, we did see Beyonce's baby bump, but it was a light show." And they'll say, oh, no, she, we saw she was pregnant with a baby pump. Duh, that was a light show. How can you be so, I mean, could, are you that simple to be deceived? So, like, like I said, right, the truth is sometimes very difficult to accept. So it's going to be like uh, that movie that you've watched, you know, with uh, it's called A Few Good Men. It's starring Jack Nicholson and Tom Cruise in which... Jack Nicholson tells uh, in which Tom Cruise says I want to know the truth and Jack Nicholson says you can't handle the truth you know so it, it that is what we face with so I'm here just to present some more facts to you that Beyonce has never ever been pregnant because she's been a dude all along now one of the things that makes it very very difficult because like i said is the vatican that controls everything they control the economy most importantly because without being in control of the economy they can't do what they're supposed to do because the way to make you bow down to the new world order is to make sure that they control the economy and control the money you have so they can force you to do stuff that you wouldn't really do wouldn't do out of your own consent so another thing they control is the education system and like I always tell people um, real education is not indoctrination because what we are taught in schools is indoctrination and not education all right education uh, indoctrination means just repeat what I'm telling you and believe what I'm saying and don't ask any questions out of the norm that's what indoctrination is. That's we, that's what we are taught in schools and we are told that it's education. Just repeat what I'm saying. Believe that it's true. Don't ask any logical questions. We can have space for some stupid questions just to know that you do understand what you're saying by repeating it. Does it make sense? And that's what we're being taught in schools as education, but it's indoctrination. So here on this channel, what we try to do to you is to educate you. So like I always recommend, if it's the first time you're on this channel and watching a video of ours, I will recommend that you download the document that's attached 
to this video will attach a document that will show you the visual differences between a male and a female so attach that document look for the primer video on this channel right get to the primer video and watch that first watch also the Zayn Malik video and the Marilyn Monroe video you can watch the Beyonce part one before you watch this one so we'll give you like a basic foundation so before I go further right I, I just want to say I, I want to show you a little bit of timeline in history that can clear a lot of things up all right now people always say that the um, maybe you've heard this a couple of times when they tell you that the Illuminati right runs the world which is technically correct it is correct but what they never tell you it's that the Vatican is the Illuminati all right now I've already presented this fact before on a page but I'm just gonna present that again so that we can get into the basis of this show now Adam Weissop is being um, is, is the guy who founded the Illuminati officially in the records right but let me just read something and, 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 and it's like I always say it's wonderful how stuff is right in your face but because you've been so mind indoctrinated by the system, the media, which is all owned by the Vatican, right? Telling you all sorts of stories and you choose not to go down and read. You just believe what they tell you. It's in your face. The, I mean, the evidence and fact is right in your face telling you who is the Illuminati. And yet we refuse not to see it. So I'm going to read that right here again, just so we can get into the basis of this show, right? It says, Adam Weishaupt was born on the 6th of February, 1748 in English thought, follow my mouse, in the electorate of Bavaria. Weishaupt's father, Johann George Weishaupt, right, died in 1753, okay? When Adam was five years old after his father's death, he came under the tutelage of his godfather, Johann Adam Freiherr von Eichstein. Okay, can you see that? And and it says, who like his father? That means Johann Adam Freiherr von Eichstein, like his father, was a professor of law at the University of Ingolstadt. As I've said, the University of English that was a Jesuit university. Once you see the word Jesuit, it means the Vatican. It means the Roman Catholic Church and its hierarchy, right? So just like the University of Georgetown in America, which has produced most of the presidents since 19, I would say, I don't know from whenever the inception of Georgetown University came into being, has produced most of the presidents and the political appointees who run the United States of America, so was the University of Ingolstadt in Bavaria at that time, which is present day Germany. Now let's keep on reading. He says, Ishtag was a proponent of the philosophy of Christian Wolf and the Enlightenment, right? And he influenced the young Weisop, which is rationalism. Weisop began his formal education at age seven at a Jesuit school. You see that right there? Weishaupt began his formal education at a Roman Catholic school, a Vatican school. He later enrolled at the University of Ingolstadt, which is a Catholic university, right? Graduated in 1768 at age 20 with a doctorate of law. Can you read that? In 1772, he became a professor of law. The following year, he married Afra Sansanhofer of Eichstadt, okay? Now, the very next paragraph, I mean, this is the official page of the Illuminati Talk about, about, uh, talking about Adam Weistock. It says, after Pope Clement, right? After Pope Clement, I and V here should, I don't know, it should be the Pope, Pope Clement the 19th. That's what I would say. I, I can't read Roman real well. So it says, after Pope Clement, suppression of the society of jesus in 1773 a pope it brings in a pope to show you right that is talking about the illuminati that they are the inventors right they have the they have the university which um uh, uh weiss up trained it 
they have the school that he went to as a young kid. His father was a professor at the University of Ingolstadt, right? And so was his godfather, Johann George Weishaupt, all right? Let's keep reading. Weishaupt became a professor of canon law. A position, see that again, a position that was held exclusively by the Jesuits, exclusively held by the Roman Catholic Church. You had to be a you had to be someone who was in the Roman Catholic Church to hold that position in that university. I'm not going to read any further. The Vatican gave him the tools. They gave him the training. They gave him everything to make sure that he would found a principle upon on which they could rule the world because why during the during the reformation the protestant reformation because a lot of christians don't even know what it means to be protestant anymore right during the protestant in which martin luther hung his thesis right on a catholic wall declaring that the pope is not of god that he is not worshipping the God of the King James Bible that's been interpreted today as the King James Bible. That's what led the Protestant movement. And because of what Martin Luther King did, a lot of kings and queens in Europe decided to rebel against the Roman Catholic hierarchy, which way they were under. So a lot of kings came out of that. And because of that, they became Protestant. And when they became Protestant, they were very, very successful. And they were no more longer on the authority of the Pope. So when this happened, the Pope decided, they decided, that's why the Jesuits were formed. To make sure that they could bring back the kingdom into the Pope. The worldly kingdom that the Pope had. This is where Adam Weissel was trained. To make sure that he could found principles on which they could make rule the world again as it was before the protestant movement. That this is not this is not gonna be history that you're taught in schools, in books, or in your churches, because the churches are on the Roman Catholic doctrine, they're preaching the Pope. Because they have this 501c3 thing which um, gives them a tax exempt status in which they can talk about politics or anything related to that otherwise they'll be taken their tax exempt status will be taken away from them so that's why you don't hear this and then also most of the people who call themselves same pastors like i said when you see someone on tv you can't trust that person he's not working in your own interest he's working in the interest of his own interest or the system itself which is run by the vatican like I said, if you happen to see me on TV, please don't listen to me anymore, all right? Because like I've said before, there are only two types of people we see on TV. People who run the system, the people who are working for the system, or the, sec the second type of person is a person who's been made to be a scapegoat. That means he's been an enemy of the system, and they want to show a perfect example as a warning to all others, do not do this anymore, all right? So most churches will never preach this to you because they are under the law which will take their tax exempt status away from them. It's called 501c3. If you don't know about it, I'll just show you on the screen right now. All right. It's here from the IRS. This is an IRS website. You can just pause this video at any time and read that. As you can see right here, it will say to be tax exempt under the section 501c3 of the internal revenue code an organization must be organized and operated exclusively for exempt purposes set forth in the section 501c3 and none of its earnings may inure to any private shareholder in the individual individual in addition it may not be an action organization what does that mean to be an action organization you must not talk about the system 
You can't talk about the system. That's exactly what those words means. Action organization. And he says that is it may not attempt to influence legislation as a substantial part of its activities and it may not participate in any campaign activity for or against political candidates. Can you read that? Highlight on the screen, right? So the question is, what does a five? What is a five one C three organization, right? Now let's take a look. We'll just find that out. All right, five o one C three, right? Wiki. All right. You can see that on my screen now as I'm typing. We go to the five o one C organization, right? Okay, and we scroll down. And we sign we see 501c3 here and we can see I, I won't just click on this but you can highlight it says religious educational charitable right I'll just stop right here religious to show you anything that it has to do with Christianity so-called Christianity all right so with that said um I want to show you a brief history as well so Adam Weishaupt, I want you to follow the timeline here, right? In 17, in 1776, May 1st, Johann Adam Weishaupt found the Illuminati. I want you to follow this timeline really good, okay? Now, after that, you see something here, we go to the Federal Reserve Bank, which controls the economy, right? And he says, Alexander Hamilton, the first secretary of the treasury started a movement in 1780, four years after the Illuminati was found, advocating the creation of a central bank. Can you see that? Follow the timeline, right? Let's go to the next timeline, right? It says, in response, after 1780, in 1791, the United States was, uh, the first bank of the United States was established in 1791. This was the preempt bank for the Federal Reserve Bank, all right? Can you see that? Now, after that, it says, that's how they started controlling the economy, to make sure that they would have everybody in the firm grip if you're not working for us if you're not contributing to the lies then you can't eat because how do you make a man a slave the first thing of the first rule of all slavery is that you take land away from the people prior to this all land was owned by individuals and monarchs People were defined by how much land they had. So thus, for example, if you wanted to know who a man was, all you needed to ask was which land did he, which lands did he own, and they would describe. Oh, he's the is so and so and so, and he owns here, here, and here. That's how people were described. Your name was even attached to the land. So if you say, for example, your name was John, it would be John of Bavaria. That's how people we know the lands defined who they were. Now, in order to make a man a slave, you have to take lands away from him. So what did they do? Right now, the law says that all land is the property of the United States government or, or any other country in which you are. Individuals can't own lands anymore. So when individuals can't own lands, what happened? Because when you own land, you can plant your own crops rear your animals and feed and you wouldn't need any help from anybody or ask anybody for anything but once you the right of ownership as land of land has been taken away from you you have to come into the system and the only system that works and that system is the money system that's the way it works in order for you to get money you have to be subject to rules a typical example i'll tell you is like for example if your employer tells you to be at work by seven o'clock in the morning indirectly your employer is controlling your life 
because you're going to be making sure and working towards the fact that by seven o'clock in the morning, morning, right, that you are at work. So you have to do everything on time. He's controlling your life. Why? Because you're in the money system. You don't have land that you can feed on, plant your own crops. There's so many rules and regulations that will not let you do that. And secondly, the land has been taken away from you. It's now the property of the state. Okay? So let's go on now. What, so you're following that timeline. Now, after this, what happened was, um, in response to this, First Bank of the United States was established in 1791. Its charter signed by George Washington. That was the preempt bank for the Federal Reserve. Now it says, if you you can read this, you can go and read this history on your own. On your own, after that, a financial crisis known as the Panic of 1907 was started all right and then the federal reserve bank in response to this the federal system was created by the federal reserve act of december 23 19 1913 two days before christmas when congress was asleep that's what happened this this federal reserve bank was never ratified and as i've, I've always said there are two ways you can generate money all right now, the money that you, the Federal Reserve Bank generates for the United States is generated out of debt. So what, I, what I'm, I'm going to explain that. So, for example, let's say your U.S. government wants one million dollars for whatsoever need. All right. Now, they'll go to the Federal Reserve Bank. The Federal Reserve Bank will print one million dollar notes at a cost of, say, a hundred thousand dollars. So the total cost of that money will be $1.1 million, all right? Now, the Federal Reserve will, turn, will add an interest rate, depending on, I don't know how much, I don't know what they do up there, or what's the interest rate like. They'll add an interest rate. They'll hand it over to the United States government. So the United States government will owe them $1.1 million for $1 million that they were needing, and they'll also have an extra added on interest rate on that. So when that happens, the U.S. government has to come to you, will tax you. That's the reason for all the crazy rules and regulations, to tax you to make sure you pay that money. It's a form of control. Now, under, United, under the law, under the normal law of the United States, Congress is supposed to print its own money. So if that were to happen, the money would be debt free because in a logical scenario, if you buy something for yourself, or you make something for yourself, you don't owe yourself money. So the money would be debt free. They wouldn't be owing anybody. Because let's say, for example, you want to print some documents for yourself. You print the documents for yourself. You don't owe yourself. Does it make sense? So there's a difference between the U.S. note. Like I've said, is what this is the thing that has killed most U.S. presidents. Be JFK, be Abraham Lincoln, because they wanted, they wanted to be the ability to print their own money without debt so they don't owe nobody anything so do your own research there's a difference between the u.s note and the federal reserve note you have to go look that up all right now follow the timeline as i was saying so at 1913 the federal reserve bank was created now let's go on now in world war one right started a year later do you think that's a coincidence this was all part of the plan of the illuminati all right now they found out now you control the money first then you start a world war to weaken the monarchs remember what happened what started the world war according to the official story the prince heir apparent to the throne of, is it the Austrian Empire was assassinated so the war served the purpose to weaken the monarchs and the protestant um, you know empires around we, 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 we which had succeeded from the Pope and the Roman Catholic Empire okay so in order to bring them back first they had to control money in order to control them and to destroy them then they use war to weaken them you can see that on the screen right there. Now, so 
And then another thing that happened, this is what people always say, all right? They say the Jews were them. Jews are scapegoats. The only reason the Jews, because the Jews that we see today are not the real Jews of the ancient Hebrews in the Bible. Okay? That's what a lot of people don't know. Okay? So, the Jews were created, the real reason the Jews were created was this. I'm going to give you a brief history. You can go look this up. Now, during the Crusades, all right? During the Crusades, um, the Crusades was to make sure that uh, the Roman Catholic Church could have Jerusalem as their capital, all right? This was the reason for the Crusades. Now, the Crusades couldn't bring back Jerusalem under the authority of the Roman Catholic Church. All right? Now, prior to that, the way the Crusades had to go in the first place was this. All right? The Roman Catholic Church had tried to... Uh, um, 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 take over Jerusalem and it didn't work because the um, Arabs were there now the Arabs were pagan they really didn't really have any um, they really didn't really have um, any let's say um, religion as it was they were pagan all right and so and fighting the Crusades wouldn't really win them a war. So this, the, the, the Vatican hierarchy started to think, how can we, because it's not working, you know, fighting these people hasn't been working. How can we get them to give us Jerusalem? So they invented, you know, um, Islam, right? So because the Arabs had known that, that according to the Bible, they were the children of Ishmael. Now, in order to control them, they had to give them a religion just like Judaism was a just like say uh, uh, the the study of the Torah. I'm going to use the right terms now, terminology. The study of the Torah was what the Israelites, the ancient Hebrews, had, right? Okay. Now, so the ancient Hebrews at this point in time were still fighting, even after you know. Uh, uh, the destruction, fighting to still keep a hold on Jerusalem. And then you have the Roman Catholics also trying to fight to have Jerusalem. And the Arabs were fighting as well. And the Arabs were much more plentiful in number. All right. And this war wouldn't work. And they were pagan. So in order to control them, they had to create some sort of religion because people get unnecessarily attached and, you know, and fanatic when they have a God. So they sent somebody to train a young man. That young man was Muhammad, all right? Muhammad, um, he, he, they were given some clerics. And then, um, and, and then Muhammad was made to marry a nun. His wife was called Khadija, all right? She was a Roman Catholic nun, all right? So when, um, when this happened, okay? When this happened, I just want you to listen to my story, okay? When this happened, um, Kadi, the, 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 when this happened, Islam was formed. So when Islam was formed, the deal was when Muhammad has in, gets in control of the Islamic, uh, of the Arabic community, community, all right? And he wins, all right? And he wins and takes over control. He was supposed to hand over Jerusalem to the Roman Catholic Church. That was the deal. Okay? So now, prior before Jerusalem could, uh, sorry, prior before um, Muhammad couldn't broker that deal, Muhammad died. So when Muhammad died, he probably he told this story right to the hierarchy or the people around him who uh, were supposed to lead the Arab world as Muslims. But when he died, something else happened. That's where you have the Sunni and Shite um, 
shite, you know, um, differences in Muslim, Muslim because the Sunni believe that clerics, people who have the authority, who are learned, should rule over them. The Shites believe that it has to be somebody who was like a descendant, a direct descendant from Muhammad himself as his son. So when this happened, these people were renegade. When Muhammad died, the deal renegated. All right? These guys didn't give over Jerusalem anymore to the Roman Catholic Church, to the Vatican. So now what happened was that Rome, since then, have been trying to get back at Jerusalem, to get back that country, the seat, because the seat of the new world order, the authority, the seat where they would run the world when it's all done, when they have everything in his grasp and his control, was supposed to be from Jerusalem. So now when those leaders, when this, when this split happened after the death of Moab between the Sunni and the Shite, these guys renegated on the deal and they said they didn't want the Roman Catholic Church anymore. So they started to attack Rome. So if you ever heard of the Moors way back in the day, this is why these people started going into Europe to make sure that that deal would never ever happen. Okay? Now, unfortunately for them, they didn't win. So, and then when they didn't win, Rome was now on a vengeance against the Muslim world. So when you see, when you see all the problems in the world and they're attributed to Muslims, is because the Muslims do not wish, they do not agree. Especially not the hierarchy, because the hierarchy can, they can broker deals with the hierarchy. But the people itself, the lower base people who don't understand that Roman Catholicism and Islam is the same thing. Like I've always said, they worship with the same prayer beads, whether it be prayer beads or the rosary. They worship the same scent or whatsoever called Fatima, right? So they don't understand that. So that's why there is anger against the Muslims today because they didn't give them Jerusalem and they're still not willing to give them Jerusalem till today. All right? So the Vatican had to find another way to get back to Jerusalem. So that's why they invented the fake Jews and brought them back under the guise, right? They instigated the first world war, the first, oh, sorry, they, in, 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 the, the world war served two purposes. One, to weaken the monarchs who had succeeded from the, uh, the Roman Catholic Church, right? And then two, to make the Jews to be hated, to kill enough Jews such that, uh, fake Jews such that they would want to go back to find a land for them, give them the premise to find Israel. So that is what really happened. Okay? The Jews that you see today are not the ancient Jews or Hebrews of the Bible. Because in the first place, right? They weren't even the color of the skin that they are today. I'll just give you a point, a place to read in the Bible. You can go to King James, okay? The King James Bible and read Amos chapter 9 and verse 7. I'll pull that up right here so you can see. Let me try to pull that up, all right? I'll pull that up real quick, okay? Um... If we go, let's go, let's go right here, right and see, all right? Book list, we go to Amos, I'll just give you this portion, there are so many other places you could read about it. Amos, and we go chapter 9, and we go to verse 7, I'm going to highlight that right here, right here. Please only look, all right? Now, this is a wrong the New International Version, I thought as well. Let's go to King James because he will say it properly so you're not confused because the law of these Bibles, I don't know what they are reading on the and interpretation in that, all right? Okay. So, Amos chapter 9, right, and verse 7. Can you see that right here? I'll highlight on my screen, right? He says, I'll just read it. He says, are ye not as children of the Ethiopians unto me? 
Here the Bible is likening the children of Israel as Ethiopians. And what color are the Ethiopians today? They still remain the same color. They haven't changed. They are black. Black in skin color. That technically shows you that the people that you're looking at are not the real Jews. They are not Hebrew. Right? And you can read it for yourself. Are ye not as children? He's talking about the Israelite children. Are ye not as children of Ethiopians unto me, all children of Israel, saith the Lord? Can you see that? Have not I brought up Israel out of the land of Egypt? Can you read that? So, I'll close that. You can pause and read and anything else. So that's just one of the few exceptions, all right, to show you that the physical, the physical look of the ancient Hebrews were not the same as of the Jews today. That's why, for example, you've ever um, watched the movie The Ten Commandments, right, in which um, Charlton Heston, right, it's one of those parts they never act out in that movie, in which God tells uh, Moses, right, put your hands in your bosom and bring it out and it will turn white. You will see they never acted that part out because Charlton Heston was white. He can be more white than white. It wouldn't be a miracle, right? So that goes to show you that these people are not the real Jews, all right? So now with that said, so I've, I've spent a lot of time like rambling. It's just to give you a background of what we're talking about. Let's, let's, let's get into, let's get into Beyonce here, right? Now, I found this picture of Beyonce and I'll show you the website that I found it from. I'll pause, you can pause this video at any time and look it up. Now here's the website. Highlight it on my screen and follow my mouse, okay? All right? You can pause it and take a look. And just copy that link out and post it, all right? In your browser and see what I'm talking about. We'll go back to the picture now on my screen, okay? Now, I was taking a look at Beyonce. Now, if you watch the part one of this, then you can understand what we're saying. And I want you to look at the way she places her hands on her hips. We men don't place their hands on your hips right there because you're, it's way too low. If I was a man, that's where I would place my hands on my hips. Women place their hands farther up on their hips because it's, it has to be on top of your hips. Right? Because if you place it here, it would be uncomfortable for a while. Can you see that right here? So let me just show you what I'm trying to talk about. Let me find a picture. Okay. Now, if you're female and you want to place your hand in your hips, you won't place it here because that's way too low. It will be uncomfortable because your hands wouldn't rest properly and rest well. You would push it up further and you rest it around here, right? where your hips actually start on top and on the side and if you look at her over here it's supposed to place it right over here so why come she's placing down here because that's where her hips actually start and which is the line which is a male hip line can you see that all right now so the next picture that uh, i want to show you we have to do a little more investigation just to show you what i'm saying now the next pictures i'm going to show you um will we're going to compare the skulls and like i've always said when you're comparing skulls you have to compare skulls of the same ethnicity and the same height and you have to take into account the weight as well because first of all the, the skull of a black man or black people are usually heavier and denser because of the bone structures, right? Because black men or black people usually have heavier bones because they have more water retention in their bone structure, right? And it's denser. The bones are denser than other ethnicities. So when you're comparing skulls, you have to compare skulls of the same ethnicity, like for like. Does it make sense? And you have to take account of the height of the person and the weight. Because if somebody is fat, when you're looking at the person visually, right, 
he's gonna have more he or she's gonna have more fat in the face so we'll give the appearance of the fact that the 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 skull or the brain or, or the skull is much more bigger than what it's supposed to be so you have to take into account those differences now in comparing skulls today like i've always said a male skull is at the least 10 percent much more bigger and larger than a female one because men at the least have 10 percent more brain matter than a female so that brain weight brain mass requires the skull to be bigger and larger to compensate to be able to carry that all right so we're comparing skulls today and comparing you're going to be comparing beyonce's skulls with the, the skulls of some people in this pic in the picture that i'm going to show you who are considerably of the same height and almost the same weight okay so we'll be comparing a skull with the skull of rihanna which we know for a fact is a woman and we'll be comparing her skulls to that of uh make meal and uh and and, and jay-z in this picture so we we want to we want i want to show you the heights first so you can understand what i'm saying now if you're looking at my screen right now you'll see that jay-z's height is six foot two right so we'll take on make meal all right McMill height, all right. McMill is six foot three, all right. Can you see that on my screen? Okay. Now we'll look at Rihanna height, okay. On my screen, you see she's five foot eight, okay. Can you see that? Now we'll do another. We'll do uh, last and uh, last the person in in question, Beyonce height all right and she's five foot seven all right so let's get on to the pictures right here now the picture i wanted to show you okay now oh where is it now where's my pictures so let's see uh come on all right let's start here all right now here's a picture of Beyonce. Now remember, this guy is six foot two. McMeal. He's six foot three. She's five foot seven. We know Mickey the Minaj is a girl, all right? Fact she's a woman. Don't let nobody tell you any difference, okay? Now if you compare Beyonce's skull right here, she's five foot seven. Remember that. Uh, let's say the same weight with McMeal. You will see that this skull is as huge as the guy over here who's six foot three. Showing you that her skull is comparable to that of a man. As you can see, the skull is larger than that of Nicki Minaj right here. Can you see that? And it's almost as big as Jay-Z's skull showing you that she's male okay now let me show you another picture with rihanna rihanna remember when we checked her height she was five foot eight and beyonce is five foot seven okay now let's take a look at the heads right here she is five foot seven remember when you're comparing skulls they have to be of the same height and almost the same weight you have to take account of that they also have to be of the same ethnicity that means you're going to compare black skulls with black skulls if you're going to compare caucasian skulls with uh, another caucasian and maybe arabic with arabic that's how so you can find the differences and like i've always said a man's skull has to be at least 10 percent larger than a female one if you compare the skulls right here you will see that Beyonce's skull is bigger than Rihanna and she's shorter than Rihanna. Rihanna is a female and you're looking at a male over here. All right. Now, some more pictures that's going to be very, very glaring because of all the headgear and everything else. He might look very, very funny to you. Take a look again. Whose skull is bigger amongst the two? She's five foot seven. She's five foot eight. In a normal sense, if they were both female, 
her head should be larger than this head over here. You can pause this video and look at and look again. But as you can see, the head over here is larger than this, showing you that this is male at five foot seven. All right. Okay, another picture. Let me show you one more. Take a look now again. She's wearing heels, so that's why she looks taller. She's five foot seven. Do your own research and see what I'm saying. And this is five foot eight. She should have a smaller skull than Rihanna over here because she's shorter. If she was female, all right? But you can see the head is unusually large at five foot seven. It's bigger than the head over here that's five foot eight. Showing you that you're looking at a male right here and not a female. All right? So with that said, it, it was just a part two. The reason why I had to do all this is because people will, will have watched the Grammys because uh, this is February 19th. It's a few couple of days after the Grammys and, would, and they would say, oh, we saw Beyonce having a baby bump. All right. What that kind of thing. You saw a light show and you thought you were looking at a female. So I don't want you to get confused because people can get confused and deceived so easily. All right. Just look at that head, how massive it is at five foot seven with a girl who's five foot eight. Clearly showing you that you're looking at a male. She's wearing heels here, so she kind of looks taller. She's five foot seven. Rihanna is five foot eight. Okay? Now, so when people watch the Grammys, like, you know, this light show over here, right? That they would watch. Now, I can't play it for too long because I don't want any copyright issues with YouTube. I can play it just for a few seconds. They will say, but we saw this. And she was pregnant. What did you actually see? This light show? Right here like that. Because they made the light show with the actual appearance of her on stage. Is that what you saw? That's what you saw, right? And some would say, oh, we saw her pregnant. Dudes can get pregnant. Right? Don't be fooled. You're looking at a male. All right. So with that said, I come to the end of this video. It took that long because he just deserves special attention. Right. I don't want you to get confused. All right. Thank you and bye bye.